To lead a lives and works in China for almost three decades. After encountering war in her own country, former Yugoslavia, she began to explore various traditional practices, searching for inner peace and mind body balance. Where did she go? There we go. I hope that. Here we go. Here you are. <laughs> Through her own growth, Delita discovered coaching and began her career as an executive and life coach in 2005. She coaches her clients to use their own emotional wisdom to bridge both future professional and personal challenges. She holds certifications as a professional certified coach, mindful self-compassion teacher, as well as Hakomi and trauma-sensitive mindfulness practitioner. And Delita's uh, sharing with us today and speaking on depression and spirituality. So I would love to hand the talking stick back <laughs> over to you. Thank you. Thank you for thank joining you us. Much. Thank you, Michelle. And thank you, Nikki, for sharing your story. Um, I, For a moment, I felt like we were uh, together in your place where I felt the rain and, and we were maybe exchanging our life experiences over a cup of tea or, or coffee, <laughs> whatever is the preference. And I, I, a lot of parts resonated for me. And I thought, oh, my God, like it's my story. So how, how do I go with this? And I'm sure that many of us can, can really connect because uh, a lot of people can uh, find that certain life obstacles, especially health uh, topics, can, can uh, open up the, the exploration of spirituality. And, and in a similar way, it was for me, uh, first coming from... Uh, or, or running away from, from war or just really being uh, uh, filled with anger about what was happening uh, back home and then uh, coming to China as I studied Chinese language. So that's why I came to China. Although it was a bit odd uh, choice maybe three decades ago um, to choose uh, quite still underdeveloped uh, or third world country to be in. Um, so... Uh, that anger that I that I felt uh, at the beginning led me to uh, like a lot of exploring of uh, nightlife uh, and really um, uh, going against all odds, everything that my parents taught me that they shouldn't do. Until one day, actually, uh, I realized that I was wasting my time while my parents were, were threatened with bombing, daily bombing, and, and my friends, and I just realized what was happening. So a friend opened up the um, spirituality uh, doors to me, and um, it really started to make sense, um, coming to um, connection with what it means to die and and. I really I was faced with my own beliefs um, on, on what does it mean to accept the aspect of living after uh, life after death rather than the end, you know, when it all ends. So I started to explore this uh, uh, martial, uh, Chinese martial, traditional martial arts, uh, and including Qigong, and practiced. Really, I was so devoted to practice, hoping that this practice was going to bring me to a space of being protected for any, from any harm. And, uh, and in essence, what I realized, I was, I was actually almost filling my, my body and, uh, with um, potent energy, but my mind was not there. I actually didn't have really the framework of how my mind should should operate or could operate. Because the way how uh, in traditional uh, practices, how they are taught here in China or in, in Asia is actually to um, override the mental and just go for the physical practice. And eventually uh, we will come to the other side of no thought of connecting with the divine as Nikki, Nikki shared. Um, 
but my my mental was very very strong i it didn't really go that easily that i would let go of it um so i found myself at the moment as my uh, my life was showing me that i could actually succeed professionally and um, had have these all external uh, validations of of uh, how how my uh, a spiritual practice at that time, I think, uh, was supporting me to actually achieve some uh, status in society. Um, when all of that started to crumble, I couldn't hold anymore. So um, uh, the only way for me to actually let go of my very strong mental belief was to go uh, into depression. So um, it was a very painful time and, and um, Eventually, even my doctor was uh, suggesting that all to all my friends that maybe they should just stop seeing me because I had some even rebellious um, thoughts that I needed to prove that I was strong enough to uh, commit suicide and so on. Um, until um, one a yoga teacher that I met on my journey uh, sent me a message and, and he said, I hear everybody saying that you're having depression, but you're actually having spiritual awakening. Please call me. I need to meet you. I need to support you through this journey. And um, so he became one, one of the rare people that actually I had a, had a chance to work with twice a day, uh, doing yoga, breath work, crying, and, and going through the whole uh, ordeal of uh, trying to make sense what was happening to me until uh, I was coming through through yoga and actually coming to realizing that my body was becoming stronger and more flexible and that it was actually okay to let go of my belief system completely and just come to a space of allowing myself to say that I actually don't know anything and that I am insecure and that I am feeling uh, uh, sad and that I don't need to perform and be on the top uh, all the time just to prove how strong I was. And, and finding the strength through vulnerability was absolutely uh, amazing experience. Um, and now... Um, through that I uh, work, I actually did seek therapy as well. And um, the therapist actually introduced me to mindfulness, which I then started to explore a little bit more um, and realize that the power of the emotions and how important it is to really find the strength to stay connected with emotions and go through those difficulties as, as Nikki was sharing as well. And that there is no way to step over, even if we know that uh, through spirituality we come to this point when we are feeling joy, when we are feeling connected, that that embracing the the or non-resistance to pain is so important. It's so important for us to befriend our pain, uh, but not sink into it. Um, and. Uh, Recently, uh, the, the reason why I actually chose this topic, uh, recently a member of the community uh, here um, who was teaching yoga also tried to commit suicide. Um, it happened approximately two weeks ago. And it has caused a shock in the community because he was there for everyone. He was there for people, uh, helping them to uh, bring uh, all these positive aspects, sharing the, the, the stories. He was also a, a teacher, kindergarten teacher, loving children. And then I just realized, without even knowing, I just heard that something happened to him and then later found out that actually that was the background of the story. And I felt so touched and I am feeling... Uh, that there is, there is so much need for us to be there for each other and to support. And, and at times when we are struggling to actually help people make sense out of these, these difficult parts of the uh, journey that inevitably uh, come. And I think that there is one trap uh, that uh, the, the name as, as it's been given, like spiritual bypassing, 
can lead to uh, depression in, 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 in problems when we just can't construct why am I feeling pain if I am so devoted to my practice. Um, and, and then to just find the, the place where we can sit and hold and also find the community. It is so important to find the community and, and people who can support us through, through this, that time. So um, there is so much uh, literature out there uh, that uh, my, my meditation teacher and in yogi who supported me through my depression journey, um, at certain point I would be asking him some questions and he would just look at me and he would say, you know, Dalida, I used to travel and seek for this knowledge for 30 years, I would find one master and the other master and go from one end of India to another end to find one mantra that will give me all the answers. And now you're asking that question and I'm going to give you the answer and you're not going to appreciate it. You're not going to know exactly what it means. And that, you know, but he said, you will find your own uh, lessons and then you will realize your the students will come to you and ask questions that you fought hard to come to and overcoming illness or, or mental health issues and so on and we can now go on youtube we can now connect with with everyone and just travel the world look at that i am in china and i'm actually connecting with europe it is absolutely amazing and at times I wonder, uh, how is that supporting us? And how is that hindering us in um, letting our body to catch up with the mind? Because mind can go so fast, so quickly come to conclusions. But until our body integrates, I think we are, we are, we are potentially creating a big gap. Um, and that's where I'm just inviting everyone to really... Uh, physically experience the pause and, and uh, integration with the body. And uh, with gratitude that I can share this message and with good wishes to, um, to our community member, uh, Robin, who is um, struggling at the moment with coming back uh, still. And to all those people who are feeling lost at the moment uh, in fear, um, and not knowing how to uh, connect with people with the social distancing that is uh, placed upon us and just hoping that we come out of this um, stronger and more united so i would like to complete here and perhaps open if there is no more presentation maybe just hear what other people think and back to you michelle actually <laughs> thank you